Okay, so now we're going to assess range of motion and strength, both pre and post Theragun. So go ahead and right leg out straight. So we're just going to do a single leg toe touch. Go ahead and go as far as you can. And we're right at four inches. Okay, roll over on your back. We're going to use our handheld dynamometer to measure foot-pounds of force exerted by the hamstrings. And go. Good. 78.9. We're going to do it twice. And go. Good. And 86.1. All right. Now we're going to Theragun for a minute, just the hamstrings. See what happens to our strength and our range of motion. So notice when we did the assessment of the strength, we just did gross hamstrings. We didn't try to break it down to um, bicep fem versus semitendinosus, femoronosus. So we're just going to Theragun the entire hamstring group for a minute. So keep in mind what we're doing here. We're going to talk about physiology after we get done with this so we understand why we get the changes in measurements that we get. And I'm just floating the Theragun, I'm not pushing on it. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. All right, let's check range of motion first. Okay, go ahead. And we go to six, or about five and three quarters. And foot pounds of force go to push. Good. 70.3 and push. Seventy three point eight. So now the question is, why did our range of motion increase, but our strength decreased? So we've seen the effects of the percussion therapy on gross strength and range of motion. Now let's see what it does to performance. So what we're gonna do is have Cody do a single leg broad jump uh, twice. We're gonna Theragun it, come back, reassess twice, and see what happens to his uh, performance measurement. Good. So, go ahead on your stomach. Okay, so we're just going to use this again for one minute. And we're just going to do glute max. And once again, I'm just letting the Theragun hover. I'm not pushing on it. So from our first test, we should have some type of difference on what's going to happen to performance if we understand that we decreased strength output by about 19%. So as you can tell, I'm not focusing on one spot. I'm just kind of continuously moving this around as it hovers for about one minute. And now let's reassess. Okay. All right, 
right, so now we can see here's his best post there gun at 62. Here is his pre-best at 70, so he lost about eight inches after one minute of Theragun to the glute max only. Imagine what would happen if we did quads and hamstrings too. Now that we've taken a look at what uh, the Theragun or some kind of percussion gun does to um, range of motion, gross strength, and performance levels, let's review what happened in our case studies when we looked at foam rolling and passive stretching. What we found in those, which you can find in our bio, uh, go down to the 21 question series where it talks about, it's a red screen and it talks about uh, the physiological effects of foam rolling and stretching. What we found out with that is that we foam rolled a uh, patient's IT band, uh, tested gross strength afterwards, and their gross strength went down by 37% in the gluteus medius. We then again did a um, gross strength assessment post stretching of the quads for only 10 seconds, and that decreased strength by 22%. Now we did a larger uh, pilot study on the foam rolling and found out with a large group, I think we had about 12 people uh, that uh, across the board there, the average decrease in gross strength was about 25%. So now that we know what happens uh, both performance-wise, range of motion-wise, and strength-wise, with percussion, and we know that foam rolling and stretching may increase range of motion, but that's at the cost of decreasing strength. The question is, what should we be do? What should we be doing to increase range of motion safely? And can we increase strength while we're also increasing range of motion, increasing stability, increasing athletic performance, and decreasing the risk of injury? So let's take a look at what we would uh, suggest doing with patients who have quote unquote tight muscles or what you should be doing with anybody uh, as far as an active warm up or an active cool down uh, instead of stretching, rolling, and uh, percussion guns. So we saw what happened with uh, the Theragun and um, the changes that it made to the increased range of motion with the toe touch and the decreased force output with the dynamometer readings after we did the Theragun to the hamstring. So what we're gonna do is see if we can increase our toe touch without decreasing our strength, actually increasing strength of something else, which will help us not only uh, decrease our risk of injury, but increase our recovery from injury if we're a physical therapy patient. So with Lindsay, what we're gonna do is have her sit up and just do a toe touch. And we'll measure this one. She's a little tight, so she's getting right to her big toe on the first one. Go ahead and lay back on your back. Then we're going to assess her gross strength with the same dynamometer that we used before. And go ahead and pull back and start scan. Good. So first reading, 44.9. Second reading, pull back. Good. 44.7. So now we're going to have Lindsay sit up. So what we're going to say is because of the law of reciprocal inhibition not uh, working correctly, that her toe touch is not a hamstring problem. So go arms across your chest, this elbow down here, okay. hold it right there, okay, this there, hold it right there, good, flat on your back. So what we're going to say is if we can increase the facilitation to her abdominals, that will help her facilitate abdominals when she toe touches, which will send the inhibitory response to the hamstrings, making them lengthen, and not relax, but lengthen, and allow her toe touch to increase, allow her range of motion to increase without sacrificing her hamstring strength and increasing the strength of her abdominals. So what we're doing here is uh, what we have patent pending with the 180 system, and I'm going to the neuromuscular junction, which is found in the muscle belly, and I'm basically stimulating that junction to increase facilitation. So come back up, arms across, that one down, hold it tight, good. That one down, hold it tight, good. All right, now go feet together, touch toes. So we increased range of motion by about an inch and a half. Come back up. And lay back. Now we'll see if anything happened to her hamstring facilitation. Right there, pull. Good. 46.7. And again, pull. Good. 
44.0. So basically the same strength output that we had before. We didn't sacrifice strength, but we did increase range of motion by about an inch and a half just by facilitating something outside of the hamstrings. So